budding chemists. It is time for some weak acid equilibrium. I had a request after my last video where I talked about pH and the auto-ionization of water and someone asked about some more uh, quantitative problems. So this would be where we calculate or do calculations that are related to Ka and Kw, um, Kb, and those equilibrium constants that are related to weak acids and bases. Strong acids and bases are a lot easier to deal with, so sometimes it can be a challenge if we want to figure out how do we do these calculations with the weak acids and the weak bases. So, I'm here to help you with that today. So let's get started. to tell you one of my favorite things about this calculator. And that is, every time I go away and then I come back, it says something different and it's not anything I typed in. It's like it has this mind of its own and it makes these weird things, like look at this, as a nine I think it will be a good um, segue, a good transition from the previous video. If we do start out with the auto ionization of water, but talking about the actual value of the equilibrium constant, and then how that's useful when we talk about weak acids, okay? All right. So, here we are talking about weak acid equilibria. Okay. So, As I said, we will be talking about the equilibrium constants, KWKA. I don't know if we will have time in this video to talk about KB, uh, but I'll just include it here because I will at least make a, a short comment about KB. start out with the auto-ionization of water. So, I will start out with... Let's look at 
simplification where we just have one molecule of water breaking apart into its respective ions. So I explained in the previous video that another way to write this is with two molecules of water and there's a proton transfer from one to the other which gives you the hydronium ion H3O+. But for this video, I'll just simplify it and write it in this form. Okay. For these kinds of calculations, using H plus or H3O plus does the exact same thing. So either way is fine. Totally fine. Okay. So with all equilibria, you can write an equilibrium constant expression. expressions, generally speaking, capital K, and the subscripts vary. At my university, we always say K-E-Q. In some textbooks, they put C there for concentration. But generally speaking, I'm writing the generic form. It's products over reactants, right? rules for writing out equilibrium constant expressions is that they need to be something where you can actually have a concentration. So it needs to be something that is in solution. You can also express equilibrium constants in terms of partial pressures of a gas. Okay, we're not talking about gases here, right? We're talking about concentrations. We are talking about aqueous solutions, okay? So these are concentrations in moles per liter. And then you also need to take into account if there's a stoichiometric coefficient, it's raised to the power of that, okay? Here it's one and one and one, so we won't see any powers. The final thing to take note of is that when you have a pure solid or liquid, it does not appear in the equilibrium, const equilibrium constant expression. It cannot be expressed in terms of concentration, okay? But rather it is expressed as the value of one. Now the reason for that, for solids and liquids, you will learn about if you take physical chemistry, but we are not going to get into that. It's not necessary in general chemistry to go into that level of detail. So ultimately, by following those rules of writing an equilibrium constant expression, we get an equilibrium constant expression specifically for the auto ionization of water gets its very own subscript W for water at least in English right okay and it is equal to products so concentration of H plus multiplied by concentration of hydroxide ion all right and then divided by products but because this is a pure liquid it is expressed as one. So it's the product of these two divided by one. So we don't need to say divided by one, right? So instead, we can just write it out this way. Okay. So when you have pure water at 25 degrees Celsius, this has a set value that has been measured and is known, okay, and it is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. All right, equilibrium constants are unitless values, okay, and your 
there's the known value for it. All right. So this can be useful in various ways. And one of those is if we are trying to figure out how much hydrogen ions are in a solution, how much hydroxide ions are in a solution, and because the product of these two these two multiplied together equals this. We know that when one of these goes up, the other one must go down. Okay. So we could essentially look at if there's a value that's known, perhaps if we Concentration of hydrogen ions is known. Let's say it's four point three two times ten to the minus fourth molar you can then calculate the concentration of hydroxide. known because you know the relationship between hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, right? Okay. So, let's write out this expression over here. Okay, so if Kw, or I should say since Kw, of this are going to feel very strange, right? Because the equilibrium cost expression unit is unitless, and here we have units, and here we have units. So I want you to not worry about that, okay? Again, if you take a physical chemistry course, which is upper division chemistry course, you can learn all about the details of why that is. You learn about something called activities, and it's very interesting and enlightening. <laughs> but for now, let's just put in the values, and then we just know that ultimately our concentration will be in molar and moles per liter. Okay. So let's put in our values. 
oxide concentration. Okay. So another thing that we can do is we can tie together pH with pOH. Okay. And we can see how that can also be useful in these kind of assessments. So this is something I pointed out in my previous video, but I'll mention it again here. And that has to do with significant figures. Okay. So this concentration here is three significant figures, right? Then it's multiplied by this value times 10 to the fourth. Okay. This value, this three here, this is tied in with the exponent. Okay. So this has to do with when you're taking the log and what is that power. That's what this value is helping express. Meanwhile, these values pass the decimal point. These are the significant figures. Okay, so that's why we have what looks like four significant figures, but it's actually three. If you feel confused by this, I don't want you to worry too much about it, okay? Um, unless your teacher or professor is marking you down on getting significant figures incorrect when you do pH. I actually don't mark down for being off by one significant figure when my students are doing pH calculations because I recognize that it can be a little bit confusing. And in my opinion, I am trying to teach chemistry I'm not trying to teach the intricacies of mathematics and logarithms, so I would prefer if my students understood the general concept here and got something close to the correct value than to be really nitpicky on something like this. But that's just me, okay? So I know all of you have different teachers and different professors, 
and they have different opinions than I do. So you should get to know what they're expecting of you and you can move forward with this knowledge if this is helpful for you, okay? All right, so. The direction that I'm headed right now is that I wanted to show you what the pH is and then introduce this idea of the pOH, which is analogous, and then tie these two together, okay? pOH is the minus log of OH. Okay, so now that we have calculated what the hydroxide concentration is right here, based on the KW, right? We know the hydroxide concentration and we can use it here. So let's do that. Let's see what the POH is. It is the minus log hydroxide. Once again, this value here, this is going, this is holding the value for the power that's related to the power. You'll see that it's always very close to this value. It's usually one less for reasons I won't get into. I don't want to go in the weeds too much on that, but in any case, um, so there's our logarithmic placeholder. And then here are the significant figures. There's three of them, and they will go past the decimal point. So, 10.636. 10.636. All right, so there's our POH. All right, so now let's take. I think is interesting, <laughs> okay? And that is, I want to calculate with you the PKW. Okay, so once again, this lowercase p is a mathematical operation that's taking the minus log of a value in this case, we're doing it of the KW, which is something we know. And we know that it's related to hydrogen ion concentration and hydroxide ion concentration, right? So, let's take the PKW and see what happens. It's equal to 1.00. This is actually something, once you get used to logarithms, you could do that one in your head. But if you're not used to them, it's better to use the calculator, right? 14 minus, okay, based on log. Ooh, look at that. It is 14. So it is not a coincidence that the pH scale goes 
goes from 0 to 14. Alright, so we see it's maxing out there. And when these two are equal to each other, they are each 1 times 10 to the minus 7th times 1 times 10 to the minus 7th equal. Okay, and they're equal because they are equal in terms of stoichiometric coefficients. 1 to 1 ratio. Okay. So, naturally, water breaks apart to the point where we have 1 times 10 to the minus 7th molar and 1 times 10 to the minus 7th molar. When you multiply those together, you get 1 times 10 to the minus 14th. This one here is due to a little bit of round off error, but it is 14.00 for sure. Okay. So, in other words, mathematically, it turns out that BH plus So if you ever have a P oh, sorry, a pOH value, you can calculate a pH value. Or vice versa. When they're added together, they equal 14. Similarly, if you know the hydrogen ion concentration, you can calculate the hydroxide ion concentration by using the KW. So these two ways of going back and forth between H plus concentration and OH concentration using KW, or going back and forth between pH and pOH using 14, those both can be useful.
use equilibrium constant expressions. I'm going to point this out with water. Water is a very weak acid, but it is a special one, of course, because it's also a solvent. Okay, but with other kinds of weak acids, so here, let's, as an example, cyanic acid which is HCN okay so HCN let's write out the equilibrium constant expression first the equilibrium itself I'll show you So that is 9.31, 9.31, okay. So again, here's two significant figures, and so these two significant figures after a decimal point. All right, so that is the pKa of hydrocyanic. smaller, the pKa gets larger, and that has 
has to do with this mathematical operation of minus base 10 log. Okay, so larger values of pKa means weaker acid. of this deserve to be expanded upon in another video. Okay, so that's just a little preview and we'll have to do a little introduction or review of conjugate acid-base pairs to really get into the full meaning of this. Okay, so I hope the rest of this has been helpful for you, and as always, please do let me know if you have requests. I love fulfilling requests, and I will do them always as soon as I can. And thank you for being here. Thank you for all the subscriptions. I have noticed that I have more people subscribing, which is so exciting. I love that this is being helpful for people and that you find it relaxing and educational. And I'm really hoping that it's helping some of you do better on your exams and homework assignments or just helping you sleep better. <laughs> So whatever the case may 